Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Charmed. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, uh, let's pick up with Maggie's side of things. Um, I guess Harry must not have realized that... Uh, Dex came back to life because I thought the situation was going to be like, oh man, Harry's stuck on the other side, and that Dex is um, here, and until Dex goes back, Harry won't be able to go back. I didn't realize they both came back at the same time, and the fact is, we never got anything like that. So Harry must not have realized it because Dex must have gotten up and left before Harry woke up. So, and I guess Dex is like probably didn't want to take the chance that Harry might try to send him back before he has the opportunity to make things right. But I guess. I guess Jordan ends up telling Harry later on, but it's like, oh, I get... Because that, that conversation just happens off screen, so I just thought that was kind of interesting. They weren't even aware that Dex had come back, so... But I love um, everything with Ray and uh, Dex in this episode. So first and foremost, De uh, Ray being the overprotective father, is like, oh, you need to get some locks on the window. She's like, Dad. And he's like, yeah, uh, there's something... Uh, Digging up the rose bushes, you need to do something about it. Like, all right, let's get some traps. We'll work together. Jordan, you and me get done two, three days tops. I'm like, it's so sweet uh, seeing him kind of go like overprotect the father mode right now. She's just like, Maggie's just like, stop. There's just so much she's dealing with right now. Her dad's dying from a curse. All this unseen stuff. Potentially a new uh, threat being risen. The lost one. Everything between her and Jordan being complicated as they are. So I think that's all... Very, very interesting. But, uh, yeah, the return of Dex, which Maggie's happy about because she gets to finally get to see her dad and get to know her bio dad. But Ray's not too happy about it. I was like, oh, I was kind of surprised when that happened. We saw that there was some beef between, um, well, even last episode, Dex was like, oh, Ray. And he kind of, he said Ray's name with some venom last episode. Now we kind of understand where each one of them's coming from because, uh, for Ray, it's like you abandoned the woman that loved you, and it's like, I ran away, not for my children and the responsibility, it was because I was running away, because my wife could never get over the, the one that got away, like a broken heart, it's like, you abandoned your family, um, because of you, and, and well, that was Dex's point, like, you abandoned your family, and especially bothers him, because it's like, right, you abandoned uh, you were responsible for taking care of one of my daughters, and you ran away from that. So, the back and forth between them, and obviously, Ray getting pissed. Like, how, how can you choose his side over mine? And then later on, uh, Maggie brings them uh, Trunky to, like, uh, express their feelings. And I lo I was hoping they were going to do it a little bit more, the whole passing it back and forth to express their feeling. I was scared for Trunksy because I was like, oh, Trunksy's about to get ripped apart. But no, it's like, oh, some wolf's bang poured on it. And I was like, huh. Because I, I love how they handled that in this episode, too, about, like, magic being a little off. I thought that was going to have a wider spread than it did, but apparently it didn't. Um, maybe it had some subtle influences that no one else was aware of, but I'm assuming it was just allocated to Maggie's circumstances and um, stuff like that. Because no one else seemed like they had necessary issues with their powers magically, but maybe it just because they're around... Um, Dex, maybe he kind of ended up being the epicenter of it, so everything in that vicinity, magic-wise, was kind of backwards. But I thought that was interesting how, because I was like, how was the Wolfsbane, which is supposed to kill someone, supposed to bring, because uh, I was like, right, I figured it was reacting to um, Maggie's feelings and stuff, so I thought maybe on some level she accidentally reanimated, when I said reanimated, animated it. Uh, but I love how, how much that adds kind of like a horror slasher uh, vibe to that section of the episode. It, did, it def definitely gave me Chucky vibes. I was like, oh, that's that's so wild. Um, it's just, it's scurrying everywhere and trying to choke Ray out like that. I was like, oh, that sneaky bastard. And she's like, come on. Like, you're really going to talk about Dex like that? He's trying to help. It's like, no, I wasn't talking about Dex. I was talking about Trunksy. That little bastard snuck away. Um, because it's interesting... The entire time, Dex wanted to try and do something right for Maggie because he couldn't really be a father for her. So he tried to um, find the bowl because he wanted to at least do something good for her. That's why he didn't let her know he was around. So digging up the um, the rose bushes, that was him because he was looking for the bowl because Marisol said that it had to be hidden. It was under um, a flower bed or something like that. But it turns out 
Maggie is their flower. That was like her their name for her and stuff. And it's like, right. So it was literally under Maggie's bed, under her floor. So they found the bowl, but then Trunksy took it. So, and Maggie tried to, well, they tried to lure him in with a trap. And it was interesting because we got to hear a little bit about uh, Macy when she was younger. I don't know if she ever talked about this in any of the previous seasons, but when he was sick, Dex said that Macy tried her best to find a way. So she donated her stem cells uh, to like this company to kind of like help, you know, try and fight. Because once again, they thought it was just straight up regular like cancer, but not realizing like, oh, there was a, obviously Macy would have never been able to help her dad because she, he was suffering from a magical curse and not just like a regular illness. So it almost makes me think of the magicians because, um, Cancer was one of those things you couldn't cure with magic because that was a, a whole thing. And it just kind of reminds me of that conversation. But nevertheless, I, it, it, my point was like Macy was never going to be able to cure him with science and stuff like that. So because obviously at that point in time, she wasn't even aware of the magical world and the circumstances around this whole thing. It, you wouldn't have been able to figure it out without both sides of the bowl and stuff like that. Both halves of the bowl because at the time Dex only had one half of it so but um we got uh but hearing that story about uh macy because maggie was like do you think do you believe macy's watching over us it's like and he believes it wholeheartedly it's like macy's the type of person that when it was raining when she was younger she would try to get all the worms nearby to shelter she saved up six months of her own money just so that a, a friend or a girl she knew could go to like that science camp or something like that that's who macy was you know, so it's like I have no doubt that you know she watched over those. That was proof of what kind of who, what kind of person she was. I, and it's like I know that she's doing the same thing for you guys even now. And I thought that was beautiful. Uh, but uh, Maggie's attempt to put him to sleep doesn't work because all magic, like I said, I think is mainly because um, Dex being a spirit, being in this uh, realm of the living, throws magic off, and so. Her powers aren't doing, like, where she was supposed to try using her power to put him to sleep. She ended up pissing Trunksy off, so. And I love this, the whole situation of, like, uh, Dex is like, we need a bell. And Ray's like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I totally agree with you. And she's like, no, we can't give up. He's like, we're, we are not going to be those idiots in a horror movie who stay in the house. And Dex is like, amen, brother. I'm like, I love that in this moment, they're they're connecting and agreeing. It's actually really adorable. And like the whole argument's back and forth. And it's like, oh, you must think you're better than me because you're taller. Because they're trying to draw Chucksy. I, I actually really like the back and forth. Um, it's a beautiful and frustrating thing about having both her fathers in her life. But I, I do love what Maggie had said before we get into that. That, um... It's thanks to both of them that she is who she is. That thanks to Dex, it's like, right, I I was even born. And Ray, um, you helped make me who I am today. Like, both both of you together helped make me into what made me into a charmed one. You know? I know you have your issues with each other, but, you know, Ray did his best to take care of me. And it's like, right, having, you know, it's not like a picking or choosing. Like, she's considers herself lucky to have both of them as dads because they, both of them together uh, uh, being a part of her helped make her who she is and I thought that was beautiful so and I love that they were planning she was planning on like burning tr uh, Trunksy with like maybe some spray and like a lighter but Trunksy got it first released some gas and it's like oh if you try and touch me again I'm gonna burn this place down you're like dude serious Chucky vibes I love it then they lock themselves in the attic and so Maggie ends up using a spell because I love they're like, all right, we're going to like we're going to make something so that Maggie can get out. It's like, no, no, we're not alone. We got each other's back. And it's like, yeah, like like I said, the teamwork, because it's like we're both your dads. Let us protect you. And they were willing to stick behind and like work together because both of them are united. And the fact is that they love Maggie. And so Maggie ends up having to use a spell, a spell that brings things to life. But because magic is backwards right now, it kills anything that's not supposed to be alive. And so Dex ended up going back and so did, um, and Trunksy ended up going back to being an inanimate object. I'm wondering what Maggie's relationship with Trunksy is going to be like going forward considering it's like, yeah, you did try to kill me. So that's going to make things a little weird and awkward. Um, so I thought that was fascinating. Um, but I did love the end result. They do now have both sides of halves of the bowl. Ray drinks from it. It's like, oh, he's cured. I'm like, 
oh, I guess it's like that's that's the end all be all there. But I was also like, there's that yeah, can't be that easy. There's got to be some stipulation. But it seems like everything's okay until the other shoe drops in that case, which I think it kind of does at the end of the episode. But we'll get to that soon enough. But um, I even love Ray being like, I hate to admit it, but I actually kind of miss the guy. He, he's a good guy, Dex. And it's like, yeah, but for Maggie, it's like Dex isn't going. He's always going to be a part of her now. Um. He's never fully gone, and I thought that was beautiful. And then just even getting this limited amount of time, uh, just like uh, Macy got a little bit of time with their mom, wasn't that last season, I believe, Marisol, when she got to actually meet her, and not the fake version they ran into in, what was it, season one? That wasn't like a mirror creature or something pretending to be her at one point in time. I want to say that was season one. Uh, nevertheless, I thought that was kind of neat. Um, another angle to this episode is the... Kayla, Dev, and uh, Mel side of things, which I love that, like, um, Kayla and Dev are being so cute. And I was like, oh, I wonder where Mel is. And there's Mel in the backseat, like, this isn't time for you guys to be making out. But um, they ended up following Sonny, and Mel ends up getting trapped in there because Sonny set up that whole um, shrinking the place to a... Into a turn it into a snow globe type of thing, so that was interesting. Um, let's focus on the Mel and Sunny side of things. Like, despite everything, Sunny still trying to kill M Mel's like, All right, let's work together and get out of here. It's like, Wait, you're still trying to kill me. And even later on, she's like, Wait, 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 let's call a truce. It's like, Really? I try to call one before you still try to kill me. It's like, Right, but we're gonna freeze to death if we don't do something. But we finally get some insight into why, um, why Sonny has such beef with the Charm ones. And I'm sure, like, the reason why so many people are able to swing towards being part of the Unseen is because everyone's got their personal issues that... I mean, it's easier to kind of blame the Charm ones because I think for them, the Charm ones kind of are the root. Like, for example, we find out Sonny, she got attacked by the faction. Luckily, um, she was able to get away. Not all other magical creatures were. She was having, for two years, it's been two years, and she still has nightmares about them coming after her. And it's like, right, we stopped the faction. It's like, yeah, but you didn't do it fast enough. Because, yeah, there were so many magical creatures that suffered and died before they found out about it. I mean, that was going on for a while before they were even aware. I mean, granted, I don't think they know about the stipulation that Macy was dating Julian at the time, who was technically a part of it. That was mainly, it was his pet project but it was also like his aunt being the very like evil evil person um but that's also the thing too like Mel explains like we're we may be the charm ones but we're just three women who got this all thrust upon us and that's why I'm like the fact is and I think that's always even in the original series I always thought that was unfair that the magical world chastised them to be fair that was kind of like the point they were they were they were so busy trying to live their lives that they weren't putting the magical world first as kind of whole stipulation. But also, it's like they were doing their best. they That's the thing. They may be the charm ones, but they're not gods. They're not omnipotent. They're just regular people, just like any other magical creature trying to live their life. And yes, they have the responsibility, but they're just... All of this was thrown at on them. They weren't prepared for it. Like, whether it be the Hollowell sisters or the Vera sisters. Like, no one prepared any of them for this. It's just the responsibility was kind of jump dropped on you one day. They've only been at this, like, a couple years. It's not like, oh, man, since birth we've been preparing for this. Even now, Kayla is where they were a couple years ago. She's starting at square one. So, it's, it's so unfair but once again, these are magical creatures that have felt unseen, unprotected. It's like we have these powerful protectors in the, yeah, you protect certain people. You protect other witches, but what about every other magical creatures? Because in retrospect, I, I think that is interesting because I feel like there have been some instances of them interacting with magical creatures but and saving them. But it's mainly been witches, especially around season two, because that was the faction and stuff. So they... Well, season two and part of season three, because obviously because of the pandemic and everything that ended up uh, bleeding over in that regard. But they mainly saved witches more often than not. Um, and so I, I can also understand why the magical creatures felt unseen. It's like, oh, witches are going to be your top priority. And I thought that was interesting from Sonny's perspective of like, um, with the lost one, People like us will be the first, will, will be the pro first priority. But then Mel's like, yeah, but then there's going to be, a, someone's going to have to come second, third, fourth. It's like, you know, even if you're doing that, there's still going to be another hierarchy to like, oh, who takes precedence over. And 
Sonny's like, it's not going to be like that. And I was like, yeah, it will. Like, I get you. I can understand your frustration and what you've been through. So let's work together. We can find another solution for this. It's just that because Mel and them weren't aware that this was such an issue. Like, if people had come to them, they would have tried their best to mitigate a lot of this. But, you know, I mean, once again, it's just balancing everything. Um, I even love that um, Sonny, because she is a, her species purrs. Um, I thought that was actually super good. And Mel was like, are you, are you purring? She's like, it's just kind of a natural body response. Like, don't like, don't think too much about it. Like, leave me alone about it. Um, but luckily on the outside, Kayla and Dev, uh, ended up finding a means to get them out. And despite, uh, Sunny passing out, Mel still dragged her out and they were able to escape together. But Sunny's like, no, I'm not going to, because Mel saying like, right, like, this still can work. We don't have to be enemies. We can work together, but it might just take some time to get other people on our side like that change things. But for Sonny, it's like, no, I've waited long enough and I'm not going to wait any longer for things to change. So, and given the opportunity, Mel didn't kill her. Granted, she does have, like we do see, she only has five lives left now because when the faction was coming after her, that's when she lost, I think her, one of her original, or her first life, I think is when she lost that. So she still got five more, but Mel could have like done something like stabbed her or something. It's like, no, Mel just let her go and let her go through the portal because it's like, right. I want to show you that we don't have to be enemies. And that interestingly enough, ends up being a conversation at the end. She has with Kayla. I thought was pretty neat is these aren't bad. These are, these are people who are frustrated, who feel unseen. Yes. They're going about it the wrong way, but they're not like people we can, cause this isn't monsters or some evil we can vanquish. These are just regular magical creatures doing what they believe is right for the magical world because they're like, right, we're the ones that are unseen. We feel unseen, unheard, unprotected, and we're just trying to we're just trying to get by like everybody else. And we're trying to make the magical world rebuild the magical world in a in a way that's best for everyone. So they, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So it's not, and because especially what this is, this isn't just like some like, this isn't like the faction you're stopping. These are like innocent people who just want to be heard and seen, you know? So it's not, it, you know, you do this, like you try to hurt them. All that's going to do is rally their cause even more, especially now that more and more and more people are rallying behind the unseen. So it, uh, they have to find a different way to reach out to them. I think it's going to be, a, it's going to be an interesting thing. Um, I can almost see like a very like Supergirl and Wonder Woman 1984 approach to like ending this of like, right, let me share with you like my heart and my hopes and let you, you know, I think Maggie kind of went down that path, you know, kind of de-escalating it within her own way, being like on the gym cats, like, hey, this is who we are. I know you have a lot of issues with us, but here are the truth from us and not from other people. And once again, that's not going to dissuade a lot of the hate and anger that's already there, but I think it helped on some, with some cases, you know, so. But focusing on the other side of things, we had the whole Dev and Kayla thing, which I love that he's like, oh, I know about this because I dated a witch. And she's like, oh, date a lot of witches? He's like, I mean, depends on your definition of a lot. Are you jealous? And she's like, no. And it, and he tries to go, oh, so like, how was you your parents? Was it this? Was it that? Was it overwhelming? And she, and she said something. I was like, oh, that's kind of messed. I thought it was kind of messed up for her to be like, yeah, but you're not that guy. He's like, what? Yeah, you're the guy you bear so to. Like, my friend, um she's the ride or die you you're just kind of like half i was like oh i mean i get it it's also like a little bit of a protection and a, and a um some um self-preservation in that regard of you don't want to open yourself up and put yourself in that position of like oh like because she sees dev as a bit of a player which yeah he can be but you know you can't really just make it so that you can't just assume that someone is one thing just because of his past or whatever which i guess it's very um, indicative of like a pattern and so on, but because it's like, right, you're not really into the whole monogamy, at the very least, not the whole oh, opening up, bearing so and so, like, oh, I can't really open up to you about you know my uh cancer or expect you to give me like a, a ride to the airport or something like that. Uh, but Dev, and you could tell Dev was kind of hurt by it because she's like, right, I like what we have, it's fun, you know, and it's just like it could just be that way. But I think it's also because, like, right, her own life is in tailspin and she's trying to figure things out herself that she, um, she wants to, 
because I thought it was interesting. Dev is like, right, I am that guy. I can be that guy. You're the one that's making that decision. He's like, right, you want to just be friends with benefits type of thing. I get that, but don't make it seem like it's on me. You're the one that's making that decision for both of us. And she's like, you're right. So she just doesn't want to get hurt. And I thought it was interesting. Dev would say, you are more likely to hurt me. And I'm like, I wonder what that was. I guess it's because he typically doesn't open himself up to people. So maybe that's why he's like, and this is my first time really doing that in maybe a long time. And so I'm more likely to get hurt by you than you me. Maybe that's kind of what he was being saying about, or maybe maybe that was some like reference to like her being a charm one in, in in that regard, or I don't know. But they are both willing to making a promise like, oh like, well we won't hurt each other. You're like, oh boy, the fact is that being set up means it's not gonna end well. It's probably gonna blow up in their faces. Like something's gonna go wrong in that regard. I'm like, oh I hope not, but I get that feeling so but uh, Kayla is willing to kind of take that uh, next step, and I think that's uh, pretty pretty dope. It's like, right, we're going to have, like, wine and just kind of, like, try the whole dating thing. Because it is, like, a self-preservation thing of I, she tries not to open herself up. She doesn't like the really romantic stuff because it can leave you vulnerable. And as long as you never really get like that with someone, you never have to be hurt. You, you kind of put, like, a wall around your heart because that way you'll never get hurt. You you know, the fear of being hurt. Um could she even talked about it. like with her diagnosis, you just you kind of just obviously you only live once, right? So you might as well kind of take that plunge when it comes to love and stuff. So I, I thought that was pretty dope, and I think they really make a cute pair, um, her and Deb. So I'm, I'm interested to see things go further on that front. But I love the thing at the end where Macy's looking. I mean Maggie's looking at a couple. She's like, "Where'd you get this?" It's like, "Oh," and it turns out. The thing that Kayla was going to for her cancer is the same thing Macy had donated her cells to. And you're like, okay. I was like, fascinating. So it's like, oh, so we kind of are both not sisters and actual sisters at the same time. Basically, the reason why she has magic, even though she... Her both of her parents are normal is because she got Macy's DNA. Obviously, once again, Macy, when she donated her stem cells, didn't know she was a magical creature. And so, first and foremost, I'm curious how most people are going to feel about that revelation. Are, are they going to be okay with that? Like, do let me know in the comments down below. Do you enjoy that explanation for it? Do you not? It kind of reminds me, the best thing I can think of is misfits. Um, if you've never seen misfits, powers can be transferable. I mean, there's actually someone in that universe, his name is Seth, who could actually take away your powers and give you different powers. Like, he can exchange powers and stuff like that. It's his whole thing. Uh, but... There's um, an element in that universe that if you got the organs of someone who had powers, um, you can potentially you could end up having powers. If I remember correctly, I want to say the character's name was Alex because he gets some spoiler at the end of season four because he ends up getting like a heart surgery. He gets someone else's heart. If I'm not mistaken, and do correct me in the comments down below, because I didn't remember she was in it, but I remember looking through her filmography. Ruth Nega is in. Um, misfit i want to say because i think alex's power ends up being flight if i'm not mistaken i could be i could 100 percent be mistaken um and i think he got that from her if she's the one that originally had the flight ability so like i said i can't remember it's been a while since i've seen all of misfits um but I think that that was kind of an interesting time. I was like, okay, interesting. So you, and it's also kind of neat in a little way too, because it's also like, right, there's a little bit of Macy in her too. So it's even more of like, yeah, your sister's always going to kind of be there with you within Kayla too. So, and it kind of makes us like, right. It makes us um, kind of blood sisters as well in that regard. I, I just thought that was kind of a neat explanation for it. Wasn't what I was expecting. That never even crossed my mind to think that. But it's like, that is interesting to think that it's kind of implying that, right, if you get potentially the stem cells or kind of the DNA um, of something magical that makes you in turn magical. Um, I guess it's like, right, the magic, you know, because the magic from Macy's DNA manifests, I'm sure, like, if you were to plant it in someone else, they wouldn't have Macy or Kayla's abilities either. They'd have different um, powers altogether as well. So I just, I just think that's kind of interesting. Um, so there's that side of things. And then finally, we have Jordan and Harry 
um, investigating the lost one and the bowl, and they basically have to talk to the sis these three sisters. Which immediately, when I think when I see three sisters, I immediately think of like, oh, the sisters of fate. Which is interesting because on the same network of the CW, the sisters of fate was the main thing in season five of uh, Legends of Tomorrow. So it's just interesting how that works out. Um, regardless. Um, it was interesting too, like, they're very much like the, when they, when I look at them, especially with their eyes being stitched, it reminded me of the Sisters of Fate from, um, specifically from Hercules, where they had the one eyeball that they would bounce between all three of the siblings. Um, it kind of reminded me of that, like, their eyes being shut. But I also love that they're kind of party animals and stuff. It's like, oh, Spill on aisle this bitch and they're celebrating. Woo! I also love that one of the sisters she kind of gets chastised the most because she was like, "Oh my god, I made that rhyme. I wasn't even trying to like. I cannot believe we're related." It's like the other two because like a lot of times you'll see the other two w doing their thing and the other one she's kind of off on her own. So I thought that was interesting. But they know exactly what Harry and Jordan are there for, and it's like, right? We need to. We the moment Jordan starts speaking to them about his truth, I'm like. That's not like the fact is they were like, oh, yeah, it's a simple spell and stuff like that. I was like, that is too easy. It's, it's like, right. Uh, they're going after Jordan because he didn't tell his truth, did he? I thought they would have I thought would have been a thing of and eh, eh, we can't help you the moment because they were like, right. If you don't tell us your truth, you're going to basically suffer the consequences, which almost do. I'm wondering is that what that third sister was kind of saying that the other two wanted you to pu be punished, but she maybe she kind of made it so it's like right it wasn't anything too bad that was going to happen to you. Maybe she helped pull it back to make sure it wasn't anything life threatening because it seemed like a no you're going to like suffer for not telling your truth. That's just kind of how the bargain of the situation works. But um, because it's I mean it's being it's hard to be truthful to yourself because sometimes there's some truths that are so deep you can't even. Some people can't even acknowledge or see them. That's actually what that uh, third sister was actually talking about. Every time I say sisters, because I saw someone playing Bioshock recently, and so it makes me think of the little sisters from Bioshock saying sisters. Um, also, I'm not the Star Wars person, but I know like there are the um, the Inquisitors, and so when I'm saying like oh like it, it's not sisters, is it? Is daughters right? Isn't it like the ninth daughter? Or is it like the ninth sister? I don't remember. Once again, I'm not the Star Wars dude, but. Ultimately, she ends. The third sister ends up giving Jordan another shot, and ends up seeing his truth and reveals it to him. And I was wondering whether we were going to get that revelation. And it's like, right, because he had said that he thinks he still loves Maggie and he thinks he can see a future with her. But talking to Harry later on, they find out that truth actually is that he looks back on their relationship as we didn't. We weren't good together as a couple, and he's like, if we we're going to be caught in that cycle again. I think I'd rather walk away from Maggie than like put ourselves in that situation again because that's the thing of Jordan does love Maggie and he's like right hearing her refer to them as exes he's like yeah that just makes it so final and she's like you made that decision you broke up with me and he's like I took a break she's like you gave me back the tracker it's just but she's like right I get it I wasn't in a good place at the time I'm not saying it was the wrong decision but she's like right we need time to figure things out so there's a lot they have to figure out on both fronts, but ultimately they take the bowl, they smash it, but it ends with the energy from it going to the Book of Shadows, and it ends up creating a third page. I mean, not a third page, I don't want to say third, some hidden page, and it's a hidden page about the bowl and stuff, so I guess it was like... Maybe it's something that only because they were like right. It's they were saying that this that sister was saying that the lost one was sealed away by a curse by three. Which you're know I mean like right. Well, they're by threes, but there's also the charm ones themselves. So you're like it has to be something only the charm ones can break. What? Why would they need to break it? I don't know, but. That mysterious page being, like, it makes it seem like, right, that's the Book of Shadows being like, actually, there's something that you never knew because it's been removed from the Book of Shadows, or maybe it was technically always here and it was hidden, but I don't know what to 100% make of that ending there. And they're not going to know that it's there because the Book of Shadows immediately closed, so they're going to have to be flipping through it and it's like, wait, where the hell did this page come from? Or page or pages, so... 
It's definitely going to be interesting to see where things kind of go from here. Obviously, I should also talk about some sad news I found out. Sadly, Charmed is not getting a fifth season. Uh, apparently, CW went balls to the wall with some of the cancellations. It's wild. Like, I won't get into it right now, but it's like they canceled quite a few things. Like, pretty damn, like, all kind of at once, it seems like. So, this ended up sadly being one of those shows on the chopping block. I've not read into it too much. I just saw that this is one of those shows that got canceled. So, whether that's going to be a thing of, you know, because, once again, there's everything. There's the whole once discovering merger with Warner Brothers. Then you take the fact is that the CW is potentially getting sold off. Will the CW even still be the CW? Will Warner Brothers put the a lot of these shows on... Um, I'm also curious because aren't some of these shows like because some of these shows are CBS productions. So doesn't that mean like CBS has some rights to this? So wouldn't that make it harder to put some of this on a like fully only rights? Because wasn't there like multiple people who produced these shows? Like I said, I'm I'm not well versed in everything behind the scenes, but I would hope. And like I said, I haven't looked into it too much. I would hope that these shows would find a way to live on on like an HBO Max or something. But once again, Warner Brothers might not even be interested in that. This might be the last stop for a lot of these shows. Once again, it's not just Charmed. Like, stuff that hasn't even come up yet. Like, once again, I'll go into it. Like, In the Dark and Roswell are on the chopping block now. Because I think both of them are like, yeah, these upcoming seasons are final seasons. Kind of like a last minute decision, I think. Not unless the creators kind of got the heads up before the news got public. Whatever the case may be. So... I'm bummed to know that, especially because like we're right here near the end of the season. Next episode is episode ten, if I'm not mistaken, and I was I kept looking it up. I think there's only thirteen episodes this season, so we're near the end of the season slash series. And you know, because they went into this not with the expectations of it might depending on how the season plays out. The season might end in a way where it's like, hey, kind of very much like the magicians. This is a season finale that. Is written in a way where it can be at ending if it needs to be, but it's also leaves room open. I figured they were going to leave it very like open, open just because it's like they probably didn't plan on the show ending, especially because you just got introduced to a new sister. It just it it bums me out because like right, this show has only had what half the life that the OG series had, um, because the OG series had what ran for like eight years, eight nine years. So I'm kind of bummed by that. So, like I said, I'll, I'll look more into it. Obviously, like I said, we still got a couple more weeks till we reach the end of all of this. So, maybe some news will come up then. Or maybe there's some news out right now. Like I said, I've not read up onto it too much. So, I just wanted to include that just because this is something I recently read up about. I'm going to say today, maybe. Maybe even yesterday. Whatever the case may be. But, um, yeah. Either way, I'm still... Well, it kind of bums me out a little bit. But I'm still excited to see where... Uh, the rest of the season ends up taking us. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.